up my Perno peoples? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to take the Ultimaker that runs off 19 volts, convert it over to 24 volts. That way you can use common heated beds, common heat cartridges, common fans, all that good stuff that already runs off 24 volts. You're going to be able to use it and not worry about getting too much voltage to your components. All right, let's do it. Yeah! This is a pretty simple modification. It's just one chip, three solder joints, and you're good to go. Replacing the stock linear voltage regulator with this switching regulator is what allows me to be able to use higher voltages. Now that we've picked a better chip for regulating higher voltages, we've got to get that old chip out and solder the new one in. The belly of the beast. All right, so first thing we take off this wooden cooling shroud so we can see the main board. Now on the bottom right corner of the main board, as we zoom in here, you'll see that there's a linear voltage regulator. This is the LM812. Now this is not very efficient or good at regulating high voltages to lower voltages. And here's a bottom view of that same chip that we're going to be unsoldering. It's going to take you a little bit of effort to get this chip out. Uh, take your time, do it slow, make sure you don't damage the board, and just slowly get uh, all three of those prongs desoldered without damaging the pads. After you get the old chip out, it's best to go ahead and clean up the pads and prepare it for the new chip by cleaning out the holes so it goes in easily. Now here I'm just heating up the pads and then using a solder sucker to pull all the excess solder out. Once you've cleared out the holes for the new voltage regulator, you're going to go ahead and slip that bad boy in and solder it up. Now the first thing you might want to do is tin the legs on the voltage regulator separately, and that way when you put it in the board and then try to connect the solder joints, it goes a lot more smoothly. And then when it's done, it looks like this. The new voltage regulator is a little bit taller than the old one, so be careful when tightening down the cooling shroud on top of the main board because you don't want to put too much pressure on that chip. And the very last step before you can turn your Ultimaker back on is to connect the power cord. Now this gets kind of tricky because there's a lot of different options on how to do this. I chose to keep the stock power cord without cutting it apart and I wanted to allow myself to be able to go back to the 19 volts if I ever needed to. So I found a DC barrel connector that matched the plug on the Ultimaker and I cut that cable from a old project and I spliced it into my new 24 volt power supply and now I can run off 24 volts through my new power supply or I can run off the 19 volts off of the original Ultimaker power supply. That way if I ever need to go back to the 19 volts I always have the stock power supply laying around that it's easy just to plug back in. If you do decide to take the plunge and convert your Ultimaker to 24 volts, two things to consider. One is that your hot end is designed to run at 19 volts so you're probably going to have to run the PID auto tune to get that recalibrated for the 24 volts. Also your stepper motors. Those are controlled by the drivers on the main board and you might have to adjust the pots to correct for the new higher 24 volts. I hope this video answered all of your questions about converting the Ultimaker to 24 volts. If you have any other questions I didn't answer in the video, please feel free to leave the comments down below. Now if you want to help me out, you can come and follow me on Twitter and Facebook to see what other crazy projects I've been up to. And if you haven't already, of course subscribe to my YouTube channel.